I'm Andy. I'm Melissa. And I'm Jack. And together we're working on restoring our sailing yacht. Some of you might think we're crazy taking on the challenge of restoring this boat and creating a life less ordinary. And we're sure there will be blood, sweat and tears, but it'll all be worth it when we embark on our epic adventure around the world. A lot of our um, comments say that I always get the best jobs um, and today I'm going to be back working in the head. Today, Mummy's going to be uh, taking out the claw tiles. Well, now, if you'll excuse me. Don't do it. But first, um, I need to address some leaks that we have in the fore peak. Unfortunately, the forward hatch is leaking, which makes me very sad because I work really hard on that. But it seems to be leaking where we've had to do a temporary repair on the forward hatch before we get new ones um, so where it's joined together there seems to be a leak and also around the perspex um, where it sits in there so I'm going to fix that with a bit of butyl um, so hopefully I won't get rained on tonight so here are my little water catchers seems to be coming from here where this is bedded in um, to the the hatch and unfortunately here as well which is where there is a join when we removed this forward hatch it cracked um, and the water's obviously just managing to get through the through the repair somehow so I'm gonna put some butyl on it and get back to that another day uh, not right this <laughs> why'd that just have to happen You said the other time I was safe. It is safe. Just can't find the white one. Wait, wait. Yeah, it's on now. You're not Thor because you go out the side of the boat. Pardon? Good job you're not Thor with Thor's hammer because you'd go out the side <laughs> of the boat. Or even just Thor with an ordinary hammer. Yeah. yeah. Slow progress, but we're getting there. It'll be nice once this is all sanded and painted and insulated and then we can start rebuilding the head during the winter. Jack's doing a great job Am I? of tidying up the cork no, tiles. I don't. I don't like tidying stuff up. I said you're doing a great job. So earlier on last week I went to have a filling and uh, it turned into uh, quite a complicated thing. So I ended up having an emergency extraction which is pretty painful. Um, so uh, I'm not able to do anything desperately strenuous this week because I've got stitches everywhere. Uh, so what we're doing instead, because we still want to get some work done, uh, we're going to mock up some furniture in the pilot house, um, a little bit like what we did with Jack's steps down to his aft cabin. If you haven't seen that episode, go back and have a look. And moving small pieces of wood and cutting them with the jigsaw isn't particularly strenuous, uh, so I should be all right doing that. So the pilot house is now, we've got most of the stuff off the floor. We're just going to have a quick cup of tea and then we're going to start measuring up and seeing where we want the bulkhead to be here and where we want the furniture to be for our little dinette. Lots of disagreements ahead. So what we're thinking about is this bulkhead here, that side is going into Jack's cabin obviously, but this is going to be our access down into the lazarette. So we're not going to use it often, but we need to be able to chuck fenders and bits and pieces down there. Hang our, hang our wet weather gear. Hang our wet weather gear down here. There might even be, I might even put a, a bed, you know, so that when we've got guests, we have got another another bed in that aft lazarette, in that aft cabin. Just out of interest, what is the distance from there to there? Just hold that to there. So that is five foot, that's uh, six foot. So it's fine for us. Yeah, so you could actually have 
You could actually have a pilot berth, a watch berth there. We might not do that because we've got watch berths in the saloon. All this in the box is just insulation, insulating foam, insulation. But So this little wally thing here is in. Uh, it's knocked together out of some offcuts of birch ply that we got off a friend. Thank you very much, you know who you are. Um, may make this out of solid pieces once we've decided if we like the design or not. I'm going to be using some, uh, some spruce and some mahogany and some sapele and some teak to trim all of this. Um, but this is good quality birch ply. So that's going to be the little bulkhead wall access down to the half laser it's going to be there i'm going to round this corner off of course and trim it and everything uh, so the next thing today is to make the boxes for the seats uh, that we're going to put in the dinette um, see how we like the look of them so do we agree that we want that this seat here is our the one that we find most comfortable to sit on yeah depth wise and yeah. so, um, at the end of the day the table up there is going to be more for sitting, yeah. editing and doing stuff, whereas sure. down here is for relaxing. So we'll work out the height in a minute, because we want the height to be high enough to see out the windows. So we've got a clever little idea for what we're going to do about that. Uh, but in terms of the seat depth, we're going with 50, 50 centimetres, sorry, 500 mil. Um, 500 mil for engineering, because millimetres are for sewing, and <laughs> inches are for something else. 500 mil depth for the boxes and that's fine 90 well let's sit side by side on one of these cushions and see if... yeah. yeah so let's measure the width of one of them 95 50 by 95 will bring us to here okay, yeah. 100 would take us to there so 50 by 95 50 will take us to there. So, so we, go on. So we need to decide how high we need to sit to see out the window and yeah. then we can determine how high the floor will be. The basic idea that we've got is to have three boxes, okay? A box here, which is a seat with storage inside it. A box here, which is a bench with storage inside it. The only reason I'm calling that one a seat is because it's got a back. This one won't have a back, it'll just be like a bench seat. You get them in Bavarias and Benetos and all sorts to separate the galley from the saloon. But a bench seat here, so that the helmsman can sit on it from facing forwards. Two of you can sit facing forwards, you can reach the throttle. You can spin around and sit facing this way with the table in between. But in between the two boxes that are our seats, we have another box which is the floor. And all three boxes will be removable so that they'll have clips on so that they're held down securely so that if when we're healing over they don't shift but that you'll be able to move them out of the way to get to this storage bin and that storage bin will be our deep storage bin for passage so we'll only have in there really deep storage stuff that we will very rarely need to use nothing that we need for an yeah, emergency extra fuel, extra fuel uh, and food for the second third and fourth week of a, of a passage across an ocean things like that so um uh, or but or paint yeah things like that stuff that we're only going to need very occasionally so we've got three boxes in here effectively a box for a seat a box for a seat a box for the floor and then the table and the seats are going to be look oddly high because there will be a raised floor section so that we, we can look out the windows Now we're just trying to work out what sort of height. We're also toying around with the idea of the, the boxes because having the sliding boxes, which was my first idea, three boxes which latch down, 
does mean that if we had an engine problem in a in a seaway, you then end latching boxes and moving them around, and, and then you've got boxes, loose boxes. Loose boxes. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of having second thoughts about that idea. We're just these boxes. I think that seems about right. I think I think they should be a bit thicker to sit on. Yeah, but I think maybe another I don't know five centimeters higher than that. Yeah, possibly. But that high would be fine with thicker thicker foam. So that's 60, so 65 high. So if we made these 65, and then this 50, 50. So that, that box will do that because then we've got this panel, this is the floor. Yeah. We just need to work out. And that's the bulkhead that we've just built. That's the bulkhead How? that we've just built. What height it needs to be for us to sit on, uh, put feet on the floor. Yeah, well we can, we'll, we'll be making the box, we'll make the box that, that, the piece to go in the floor will be a removable box. Yeah, but what I'm saying is we need to work this measurement out before, by working out what height it needs to be for us to sit on. We've just done that by sitting no, on those boxes. No, for our feet to touch the floor. Once we've got that box in place, we'll then work out how high we want the floor to be, which will tell us how deep we want to make this box, the floor box. But is the floor box going under here? Maybe. Yeah. I see what you mean, right. So if I'm sitting here, I've got that floor box 20 centimetres. Yeah, well measure the measure the thingy down there and we know that the ones down there are too high for us. Well that, that is that 20 centimetres? No, that's 30. So if, if we had the floor there, can you see 20 centimetres? That would be about right mm. for the floor. Yeah. So this is just a mock-up of one side of the seat. We've got the bulkhead back here, which will be trimmed and made nice. There won't be these sharp corners on us. And it's nice and strong. Um, there's room for two people to sit comfortably. Uh, we'll have the table here and another bench seat the other side. I, I've got rid of the idea of the sliding boxes because I didn't like the idea of having to move them if we had a problem with the engine at sea. So we can still get access to this uh, locker under here. This will all be boxed in, so there'll be, there'll be a, uh, a hatch in here and storage inside this as well. Um, but there's this cutaway here so we can get access to the, the deep storage under there. <laughs> Please do bear in mind this is just mocking it up to see what we like. And some of you may say this looks remarkably like how it was before. <laughs> Which it is, but it's it's built out of solid birch ply instead of thin veneer. And there's access down there into yeah. the aft cabin. That was the reason that we ripped it out, and so we could get down there. And into... it was all rotten. Yeah. Get down so if I'm sat here, table wants to be what, 50 mil wide? No, 50 500 mil wide. Yeah. Are you happy with that? Yeah. 500 by. Hang on. Uh, 500 by 100. Can you see okay? Can you see out the window alright? Yeah. yeah. Another little job that I can do which isn't going to be too tricky or isn't going to be too um, sort of difficult is uh, tackling these sheave blocks in the top of the mast. Um, obviously these pulley sheave blocks are for the Genoa 
up pull, the spinnaker up pull, and the main and the topping lift and all of that kind of stuff. And there are four of them set into the mast. Let me show you. These two here are on the back side of the mast, and they are for the up pull for the main, the halyard, the main halyard, and the um, the topping lift. Uh, so they're they're fine. They're running nicely, and they are on a simple cotter pin with a split pin which uh, shouldn't be any difficulty to get that out and service no problem there however on the front of the mast this one's a bit stuck so we've got a little bit more corrosion it's interesting I don't really know why but here are the two sheave blocks for the Genoa and the staysail and look at the corrosion there they're horrendous and they don't have a simple pin with a split pin to remove them so they're going to be a right royal pain in the back behind they've got this which I've kind of ragged trying to get the flipping thing out but of course it's corroded into the two pins this goes all the way through and presumably there's a socket on this side a little seat for the end of the pin so I think they're made of aluminium I think first my first way I'm going to tackle it is to try and just smash the old aluminium bits up um, with brute force and then when that doesn't work I'm going to go at it with a sawzall and a, a blade on the sawzall so that's just hitting it with a hammer and a chisel and just smashing it to pieces so uh, the aluminium is just breaking up which is a good thing because it means I can get this pin out and replace these two with some some more modern ones I cannot understand why they've gone like that okay they're old they're 40 years old fine but why are they these two on the front gone like that and the ones on the back are absolutely fine as though nothing's ever they've never been used strange well here's the progress I've got the two bottom ones out and as you can see they're all right that needs a bit of a clean up but that's easy to remove it's just on a pin this one I've managed to smash out the two sheaves unfortunately I've broken my mouse line bum but I can tie it back onto that it's not a problem uh, so this pin look goes all the way through here into to the side and now I've got the bits of it in, including the tufnel shims from the middle because if you look each pulley's got a shim uh, sorry, a bush made of tufnel in the centre. I'm hoping I can now start to ease this pin out. And there it is. And it, that's actually going to bend back straight, but I could make a new one easily enough. So that pin goes all the way through. This has got bent pulling it out, but that's okay, that'll straighten up. That's just to stop the pin falling out, so it doesn't even need to be that strong. It's the, it's the equivalent of that. And there'd be nothing actually wrong with drilling all the way through and just putting a pin through with a cotter pin, a split pin each end. That goes through there. Um, I can get the rest of the bits out now. I can find a couple of those or even turn them up on the lathe and uh, we're sorted on that score. I'm just gonna get the rest of the bits out, but you don't need to see that. So that's one small job done, um, removing the two seized up uh, pulley sheave things from the top of the mast, which we can get done. One of our amazing followers has again been ridiculously generous and has bought us uh, all, pretty much all the insulation that we need for the boat, um, which I'll show you in a minute. He's also bought us some of these, which are bilge pumps. These are automatic flow switch bilge pumps. So you wire them to a switch and they also have a, a float switch inside, which you can hear. And I can put them in these bilges now underneath the engine and underneath the prop shaft where I wouldn't have been able to get them before. And I can wire them in and plumb them in and mount them in properly and then weld the piece of um, the patching over the top. Um, really, really useful. Thank you very, very much. If you haven't heard of the channel SV Blown Away, go and have a look. And uh, the last time I mentioned them was because I'd been talking to Ian, who's a fantastic engineer, and, and been getting some advice off him about uh, some engineering solutions to welding. This time, the reason I'm mentioning them is because 
they actually got the contract to do all of the sailing for the new James Bond film. Uh, so, and they've just started on their channel a little mini series um, where they go over and they um, take care of the James Bond boat, uh, the, the sailing yacht that was used in the James Bond film. And it's the story of how they go over, sort the boat out and do all the filming for the James Bond film. So uh, this is just a shameless plug for them. Uh, it doesn't benefit us in any way, but we like to help each other out and they've been really helpful to us. So um, I, I think you'll just find that really interesting little series. So, uh, and it's topical with the James Bond film having just come out. So head on over to SV Blown Away and, uh, and see what you make of their little series. So we're just, so we're just mocking up a table um, to see what that looks like. This is our mock up. Please don't think this is what we're preparing no. with. And um, this is our mock up of what the, the sort of uh, dinette is probably likely to end up like. We've still got access to the aft lazarette there, so we can chuck our fenders and ropes into that lazarette. We can hang up that up, that's our wet locker area. Um, Jack, can you spin round that way and go on the helm, please? So the helmsman can just turn around and they've got the helm position, access to the throttle and access to all of your nav. Um, this table will probably make it so that it drops down and we'll have an infill here so that if necessary we can actually have a, an off watch berth here as well. Um, and it's just somewhere for us to sit and have breakfast and um, do our, it's somewhere for us to sit and have breakfast and do our, use the laptop for the Jack to do schoolwork. Which one's got a number greater? Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week. See you next week!